Hello, 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 beautiful community, and welcome back to the care plan. It has been a minute since we've done a live, and we are so, so thrilled to be with you. Uh, I hope that you have been well, that you have been taking care of yourselves and each other. I know it continues to be a tumultuous time for many folks. Uh, heading into the fall, there can be a lot of different feelings that arise. Some of us are feeling excited. Some of us are looking forward to celebrating our respective holidays. And some folks may be feeling some grief, sadness, and loss, of, uh, either of folks who you have who have transitioned people that you miss so just recognizing that this can be both a uplifting time and a challenging time of year for everybody hello everyone it's so great to see you hi Aisha glad that you're here and in the room miss you hi Patty hi Taylor it's great to see everybody uh, again for folks who may be new here or watching this video after the live I am Jackie I'm the founder of the care plan we have some exciting things happening. We have a new website that just launched. If you haven't had a chance to see it, we would love to get your feedback. Do share the website with folks who are in need. Uh, and I'll do another live in a little, actually tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, I'm doing a live at one o'clock to talk through the website and our services. Oh, thanks Taylor, the volume is a little low. I hope you all can hear me okay. If there's any issue, letting me uh, Patty, I know you're in here, so if you want to request to join, we would love to have you so we can get your brilliance and your expertise. Um, if you click that request to join button, you can join us. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. This is like our old school lives. Lots of family in the room. So thanks for being here, everybody. Please introduce yourselves in the chat. Uh, we are talking about finances today, so we're going to hear from Patty Finley, who's an advisor with Edward Jones, about really how we, especially those of us who are caregivers, who are from black and brown communities, can um, make sure that we are setting ourselves up for success financially. Uh, and so Patty will be a wonderful, well, wonderful, wonderful resource on that arena. I'm going to see this request. Uh, Patty, I'm hoping you are here. We shall see. So thanks, everybody. Please be patient. Hi, how are you? It's good to see you, Anya. Anya is one of the amazing care navigators and a, a supervisor with us as well. How are you doing, Anya? Good, good, good. Nice to see you. Good to see you too. Good to see you. I'm so glad you're in our live tonight. Um, we are talking about finances and financial wellness. And so if there's anything you want to share, feel free. Um, I know you do a lot, both for our clients and with your other jobs. So any tips or advice you would have for people looking at financial wellness for themselves or, you know, as a caregiver planning for an aging loved one? I think the most important part is to get connected with not just one, but a few agencies to really uh, figure out their resources and really keep digging and looking what works the best for you. Usually the, the first agency or first financial advisor that you come across it might not be the perfect fit for you. So don't give up. Don't get discouraged and really find someone that you trust and um, you feel that they're going to really help you to manage your financial resources because they're very much needed when it comes to caring and hiring caregivers and planning for futures and older adults. That is such great advice because I think a lot of people come from a perspective of, you know, not feeling certain about money and feeling like if there's anybody that I can talk to, I'll just go with whoever's first. So I love that advice about you're a consumer, you know, some financial advisor who's going to work with you is likely going to be managing your money or, you know, trying to help you uh, for the long haul. I view it as a long-term relationship. Yeah. Like, you know. And you, as you meet different advisors, don't feel that this is a waste of time because every time you talk to someone, you're learning. It's, it's a learning process. You have to explore your option and learn and learn and make the best choices. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Um, I really, really appreciate you jumping in here. Is there anything else you want to share about? Me? No, I miss you, Jackie. <laughs> I probably won't be able to stay for the whole thing, but I will listen. Well, we're really glad to see it's you. In always, it's always, it's always pe people are asking, you know, how, what do I do with the little money I have? How do I invest? Who do I talk to? And, you know, in the past people have come across and this is nothing against financial advisor advisors, but there were cases where people got scammed pretty badly. So it's a, it's a very touchy, very sensitive topic. And you really have to trust people that you're referring to and you're working with, I think. Absolutely. And I think that's something that we take so seriously with anybody we refer to. I mean, you know, whether it's caregiving agencies, financial advisors, home health hospice, like we vet our folks to be sure that they're going to treat our clients right. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And people who are watching may or may not have somebody like that in their lives. So, you know, if you have questions, you all know what to do. Always call the care plan. We're here for you. We support you. And if we can't help you, we know someone that can. <laughs> so Anya, thank you so much. I'm going to let you see if we can get Patty on. Um, do you know how to close out? Uh, my son is going to help me. <laughs> can you Say hi to Miss Jackie. Say hi. hi. <laughs> Your mom. <laughs> I'm going to make food. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> oh, Hold on. Let me just figure. I think so. Yeah. Got it? Uh, I think that just put you on pause. But um, if you want to. Uh, if no, no. You if you want to take me out, I'm just not sure which one. I have so Click that. No, no, no. I don't want to leave this. No, no, no. No. Oh, should I say leave? <laughs> yes, you do. That's okay. exactly what you want. You'll be back in. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Anya. That was so lovely. Um, Patty, I'm sending you an invitation to join. So hopefully that will work. Uh, and everybody, we're so glad you're here tonight. What's going on with you all? What are the questions you have about finances? Uh, because I know that it's a, a big, wild, and woolly conversation. So if you have questions, you just let us know. And Patty, I um, sent you the invitation, so hopefully you can join. There we go. Here we are. We made it. You did. I had to switch to my phone, so I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> how goes oh, that's it? A Hi. It's good to see you, friend. How are you doing? Me too. I'm doing well. And yourself? Quite well. Stay warm. I, I'm wearing my cute shirt right now, but I definitely had a big old sweater on earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I love this weather, so I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very cute friendly. I love all the flannels. I love all the, you know, jeans, boots, or jackets. Get a lot of good, good fashion in the uh -huh. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you. Um, I have known each other for a number of years. Would you mind telling our audience a little bit about yourself, you, how you came to be a financial advisor, and why you do what you do? Yeah. So, again, and Finley said, um, I am a financial advisor with, with Edward Jones. Um, and prior to, to my somewhat of a career switch. I was in, in banking and, and kind of got burnt out of a, from the revolving door of, of things that were occurring in on the retail side of it. Um, but I'm originally from Brownsville, Texas, born and raised down on the border town of Brownsville. Um, I moved up here back when I was 18. Chicago to go to DePaul. I graduated with my degree in finance and and I added Spanish because it was easy because I speak fluent Spanish. <laughs> so um, I got into banking uh, right off the bat out of college. Uh, long backstory behind that. Find me, ask me about that. Um, and after, what was it, 13 years in banking, I I decided it was time to kind of go back to my my 
degree and what I graduated with and go back to the financial advising role, um, which is, is, is and isn't what you may think it is. So when I went into it, it wasn't what I initially expected uh, because it was more of what I thought, what everybody kind of thinks is, hey, I'm gonna go sell stocks, I'm gonna go sell product, I'm gonna go sell this um, to somebody. And um, while it might be the case for some, it is definitely not the case for me. So what I like about what I do, what I love about what I do is that I'm building my business with the people that I want to work with who want the help, who need the help, who appreciate and value the advice that comes with it um, to help really build the bridges that they need to get to and through all the goals that they want to accomplish in their lifetime throughout all the stages that they want to go through. So it's, it's been a very rewarding change. Um, I've been with Edward Jones for five years. Um, it has been just the most spectacular change that I've done. I'm so glad that I quit my job and didn't have anything for three months and waited for the appropriate thing to come along. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard, that waiting, but it's sometimes the right thing. Yeah. You know, and I think, like, part of what that gets to the fear and feeling of scarcity that so many people have from it. And I wonder, could you share a little bit about maybe how you got your own life? So how you help, you know, like what you recommend for people who are like, I don't even want to reach out to a financial, no money, or I feel like I have or I just know money, so it feels like I can't even bring it up. Mm -hmm. How did you move through any of this? And what do you recommend for people who are really in their heads and uncertain? Yeah, so that, that uncertain time. So I have never been without a job since I was 15. And even prior to that, I was going door to door selling um, random stuff from a catalog that I got in the mail when I was little, like eight, nine, ten, just so I could get, there was stuff you could redeem your sales for, <laughs> like rollerblades oh. and things like that. Um, and so I've always had some sort of working role. And those three months when I, I up and quit my job was like, oh my God, what did I do? What am I going to do? You know, in college, going to college full time, jobs within college like this was this was a whirlwind for me um and it it comes down to your question about you know what do you do with this uncertainty it's, it's you, you sit down you kind of take a step back take a breather and understand you know where it is you are right now and where it is you want to be and that kind of goes for everything finances your career, so on and so forth. Because once you understand where it is you want to go, then you can start putting strategies behind that. And so when it comes to financial planning and how I talk to people, it's before I even go into finances, it's let's talk about you, let's talk about your life, and let's talk about these dreams that you have that you want to see you know, come to fruition. Um, what I tell people is it really just starts with a conversation. Um, the prior person that you had on said, you know, talk to different people. Absolutely. Find the right fit for you. I was talking to a friend of mine who said her, her uh, therapist left the industry. So they had to go find another therapist. So it's kind of that same sense where you're going to have to, basically interview people to find the right fit to see if it makes sense for you. You got to find people who are going to listen to you, who you're going to be comfortable with talking to them and who's going to have your interests at the forefront, not just, you know, money wise, but really at heart and is going to help you every step along the way to, to get you to those, to those things. Um, Can I ask you a question yeah. about that? Because I think that, you know, sometimes we know the term, but we don't know what it means and what it entails. 
And there's a question in the chat about like what's the best way to stick to a budget. So I think that for some of our folks, which I'll ask you separately in a minute, but it really is that entry point, right? Like I always imagine that to work with a financial advisor, you had, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in the bank just to even have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so advisors I work with, that, some folks, the threshold is like, you have to have a million dollars. Some folks are like, have, you know, get $20 in savings and come talk to me. What, you know, how, for somebody who has never worked with financial, what should they expect from you or from their financial advisor? Yeah, um, I am not that type of person who has thresholds. I came from, and so if I went to somebody for help and they're like, too bad, I have a help, kick me down. So going back to interviewing people, finding the right person who is going to listen to you, help you. I think little key. Um, find, you know, three, four, it's kind of like almost a part-time job having to interview and do these things, but find three to four people, set up 15 minute, you know, initial consultations and kind of get a feel for, for who they are. And then, and then dive a little bit deeper and you're like, okay, I click with these two people. Can we set up the next, you know, what are the next steps? And then kind of go from there. And so if someone says, you know, I have these goals, but I really need to learn the basics, like how to stick to a how would you recommend people to start it? What are some of the foundational best practices you recommend to your clients? And let's start with the budget, because I think there's budget, there's saving, there's investing. Yeah. Um, so like, let's start with budgeting and move along with the idea. So the most simple way to take a look at a budget, I mean, you could Google budget worksheets, you can look at that type of thing, but the most simplest thing that you could do is take a sheet of paper and draw a cross on it. On the top, you're gonna have what's coming in. On the other side, you're gonna have what's going out. And then start jotting down everything that you have. So, you know, if you get paid twice a month, what's your, what's your take home? and then all your expenses, rent, mortgage, gas, electricity, so on and so forth. And then take the ending two numbers, right? Subtract what's going out from what's coming in. And what you're left over with is a dollar amount that could be high, it could be <laughs> zero, or it could be negative. And so that number is what you're gonna figure out what you can do with. If it's negative, that means you're spending too much than what's coming in. If it's close to zero, then you're spending everything you have. And then if there's something left over, that is something that can go into savings. So this is as simple as income versus expenses. Diving a little bit deeper, into that is if there is what we call discretionary income, whatever's left over, then how much should go into what? So how much should go into savings? How much should go into my new car fund? How much should go into so on and so forth? And these are the, these are the, the kind of goals that you have to put in place that then you have someone like myself or financial advisor that helps you put strategies behind it. If it's something like emergency savings, you probably don't want to invest it because you need that almost instantaneously in case something happens. If it's something one to three years away from now, then you might want to do something savings wise, um, but not invest it fully. If it's something longer than five years, then I would talk to someone about investing it and what to invest it in, what type of product it is, what goes, what cost does it have, um, what cost does it have to go into it, what cost does it have to go get out of it, what are the tax implications. Um, that is something that a lot of people don't think about, 
you know, you might think about buying, you know, an ABC company and you're like, oh, I'm going to buy it today and I'm going to make a thousand dollars tomorrow and I'm going to sell it. But you don't think about what kind of tax implications that takes on you. So it's very important that you talk to, talk to someone who can give you all the little pointers like that. Thank you so much. I think that part of what you're, what you're saying is for people to educate themselves. And that, I think for some folks, but honestly, this is a time and space we have so much at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. You know, we can learn so much online. You can take classes about finances if you're interested or, you know, just talk to different advisors for different financial experts. Because what I found in being in business that everybody has a little bit of a different state. You know, a uh, loan officer, financial advisor, bank make a different take and approach than and somebody like Patty, who's with Edward Jones, may have a little different take than someone who is, you know, independent and does financing and casting. So I think a commitment is get educated and find and the people that work for you. So, for example, around budgeting, um, I think that question of how do you stick to a budget can vary for different people. Mm -hmm. Some people are very disciplined and will have no problem once you write a budget and understand where your money's going and how much you have every month, staying within the line. But for a lot of us, it's like, you know, kind of the connection between our debit card or our credit card to how much money we actually have and achieving those goals feels kind of disconnected. So if that's you, if you have trouble sticking to a budget, just kind of see what our parents and grandparents generation say. I am speaking up. I'm so sorry. I'll try to speak even louder. Does that help? Can you hear me better now? We'll hope. <laughs> but what our parents and grandparents' generation did was really be strict about the amount of money for different things. The one thing I've found helpful is the honor um, idea, where you put envelopes for each line item. So it's like my envelope for payment has whatever that amount is in it in cash. And then once that money's gone, I got no more money payment for the month, right? Same for gas or groceries. It can be odd to think about paying for things in cash, but it can be really helpful for building that There's also apps like Mint um, and some other apps that you can use online to see your budget and plan out your budget, and it connects to your bank. And it will kind of do that same thing for you to tell you, oh, you're over your monthly allotment for food. You're over your monthly allotment for transportation so that you can track it throughout the month. So those are some ideas on real basic, basic budgeting principles that I hope are helpful. Yeah, um, I agree with the, the envelope thing. It, t it takes it back to old school and it really – gets you hands on because we're all about electronic and apps and doing all this stuff, but it really kind of, you see, I have a hundred dollars for gas for the month. Do I really need to go, you know, to Schomburg for whatever reason to Ikea? <laughs> it's going to cost me this amount, you know, so it, it makes it more tangible to see it, you know, in the envelope, in your face, and then know that, okay, this is all I have for this specific thing. Do you have any tools for people who will be planning for retirement? Like, is there any program through home? Are there, you know, calculators that people can find about, you know, whatever age, and I want to retire at whatever age, what do I need to do to get to that goal? Is Anything that people can use to sort of get a sense of what they need planning for? 
Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do online and Google and research to get these calculators and retirement calculators to give you an idea. It's a very general idea. Um, when you work with an advisor, it really tailors everything to you, um, including inflation rates, including Social Security increases and in their rates um, as far as income that might come in. It includes if you have a mortgage, when your mortgage is actually amortized. So it really hones it in and tailors it specifically to that person. If you're looking for a general idea, a general sense, then I would just research online and kind of look at different calculators and compare maybe two or three and see how those numbers might skew a little bit from, from each other. Um, I would really think about think about when you the term retirement really means something different now than what it did before. You know, the term retirement means when do you stop the the main job that you've you've had for X amount of years. Uh, if you go to the social social security website you'll see their retirement age. That just means, you know, when you start their benefits. That doesn't mean, you know, if you start their benefits at 62, that doesn't mean you have to retire and stop working at 62. That just means you turn on the switch to receive their benefits. You can continue to work and go that route. Um, you could stop working at 50 and not turn on the retirement benefits from Social Security until 70 if you had enough savings for yourself to do so. So the term retirement means a lot of different things to different people. Um, it could mean I stop working and start taking retirement benefits at 65 and that's, and that's it. That's like the old school way of thinking it. Um, but yeah, I mean, retirement calculators, general ideas go online specific to you and your needs and your wants and your specific situation i would talk to someone yeah thank you thank you um another question i have because we have a lot of people on here who are entrepreneurs or who are interested in entrepreneurship and i think that's one of the fears folks have is gosh i'm getting my benefits i have a matching 401k plan like I have these things that I'm worried I won't be able to make up or feel intimidated and think about doing on their own. Can you talk a little bit about how entrepreneurs might think, but just some of the language or terms that people might think about instead of like the 4K and, and the things that are traditionally offered uh, in a workplace? Yeah, so as a business owner, you can have depending on your business, depending on your entity. So how you, how you set up your business, <clears throat> you can have a retirement plan for your business. If it's just you, you can have what's called a solo K or a solar, solo, solo 401k. Um, you could have a SEP IRA or a simple IRA. Those three have different benefits, um, both for how you're contributing and tax purposes. And then if you're like, that's too complicated for me right now, I'm just starting out, then you can look at them individually. So an individual retirement account, which is a traditional IRA, or a Roth IRA. All of these things though, you need to understand that if you're not going to talk to someone about this, they all have contribution limits and there's also income limits on whether or not you're allowed to contribute to them. So it's very important that you understand, can I do it? And if so, up to how much? Great, great, thank you. And we have a, another question, which is, how would somebody get started investing in stocks? And how would you know you're financially ready to invest in stocks? <sighs> That budget worksheet, <laughs> that budget worksheet would be very helpful. If you have discretionary income, if you have leftover monies that you know, so just for example purposes, 
let's take, you know, three, three major goals that people might have in their life. One is emergency savings. Two is if you have a child, I want to send them to school. And three, retirement. When do I want to retire? Outside of those things, you can start investing on your own and, you know, separately. But have you covered all those three first? And if not, then I would talk to make sure that those three are covered. And then whatever's left over from that discretionary income from all of that stuff that you're doing, then, okay, I want to buy ABC company. I want to buy XYZ company because I have, you know, $300 left over every month that I don't know what to do with. So you can start investing like that. You have to be disciplined to make sure that you're investing into the right companies. You have to be um, knowledgeable with what kind of companies you're investing in as far as do they offer dividends? You know, how long, what's the his, history, their historical performance? Um, and most importantly, you have to be uh, aware that the stock market fluctuates and so you have to be prepared for all the ups and downs that occur with investing in individual stocks. Can you actually talk about that piece a little bit more because we've been hearing so much about the stock market these last few years. Um, can you talk about any trends you see with people who are investing in the stock market? or things to be aware of? So every person is going to be different. How the two major terms can give you as far as investing is allocation. So what you're invested in, what percentages you're invested in, and then diversification, meaning are you only invested in stocks? Are you only invested in bonds? Are you only invested in one mutual fund? So you have to be fully diversified and allocated properly amongst all those products for your risk capacity, for your risk tolerance, for your timeline. So that's one thing. If we're just talking about the market itself and the trends as far as historical performance um when the market goes down just know that it will come back up so and this is you know going back to the 1920s from the great depression you know that's 80 plus years that we've seen the market and in those 80 plus years only 16 of those years has the market actually ended negative in a year okay so when you're investing, you have to invest for the long term. So that is one thing that I tell all the people that I work with. I personally am not a stockbroker to say, call you up and say, hey, Jackie, buy ABC company, and then I'm going to call you next week to sell it. That's just not how I think it's the right way to invest for people. So think about it. It's long term. Think about it. quality, um, things that have the history, things that have the performance, things that have the longevity, and know that this too shall pass. So even though it looks bad, it will pass. And how do I know this? Because we've seen it for the past 80 years. I really appreciate you going through you know, some of those in-depth questions. Let's ask a fun one. Do yeah. you have any favorite financial folks on social media that you follow or any favorite books that you'd recommend people read? Oh, goodness. I know, that's a, um, that's, that's a question. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, surprisingly enough, I am not a big reader to say <laughs> <laughs> to, to say what books um, would be good. I think if you want to kind of dabble a little bit in 
understanding some things is really kind of look at the Wall Street Journal. Um, names of, of financial people, it's really hard to say just because it's very generalized. So I think, I mean, you'll, you can Google financial people and, and kind of take your pick of who you might want to listen to, but just know that it's a very generalized uh, information that they're providing for you. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Um, one of my favorite financial books was recommended to me by a business coach early on in my career. Um, and business coaches often give you advice and are like, here's books to read. And that's, it's helpful. But the most helpful book I read is by T. Herb or Harv Ecker. Um, and it's, it's about the millionaire mind. And I, it took me six months to read that book because I felt so out of alignment with the idea of being a millionaire. I was like, listen, I only care about money to the extent that it helps my community or my family or the people that I love. But after reading it, I realized that it was really helpful in thinking through really the psychology behind money and how we think about how we think about money, how we act in relationship to money. And it was so helpful because it made me realize just like you have a communication blueprint or a problem solving blueprint, that you also have a financial blueprint, you know, ideas or assumptions that we get from our parents, our community, um, our culture about money, how to handle it or not, whether it feels scarce or not. Um, and that just helped me really feel a little bit more at the helm of my own financial journey because I felt like, oh, these are things I was learned and was taught, and I could learn and be taught other strategies and new skills. So that was one one book that definitely stuck with me that I'm like, I need to reread that every once in a while. Not because I care about being a millionaire, but because I care about being financially well yeah. in the world that we live in. Yeah. I mean, financial health, think of it like your own personal medical health. I mean use it as a tool, not as a means, you know, or unless you want to be, but as a means to elevate yourself in society in that sense. But it's really a tool, it's a resource for you to get to really the purpose of, of why you're here and what you want to do with your life, right? If, if you want to, you know, be the most charitable person, well, how do you do that? How do you grow your money to give to all these charities? If you want to start your own business, you know, how do you start it from the ground up and build that, you know, through these strategies and utilizing whatever monies you do have to grow it? Absolutely. Yep. Well, Pat, I just want to thank you so much. I have appreciated our partnership and connection throughout the years. You're always so friendly so easy to talk to, which I think is really important for our communities to have somebody that understands, you know, where we're coming from and also wants to see us do well. So yeah. thank you for just sharing your expertise with us. Absolutely. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you very much. Absolutely. If you uh, want to, you can push the X up in the corner of your screen and that'll, that'll let you... <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, y'all. <laughs> and it's okay if you don't put in a minute. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so, so much for being with us today. I'll be back tomorrow at one o'clock to talk about our website launch and our services because there are some things that have changed. So if you've been curious about what's going on with the care plan, who are we now as we approach seven years in business, I really look forward to talking with you tomorrow at one o'clock central. Thank you for being part of our community. Thank you for the ways that you care for each other. And I hope that you are caring for yourselves. Um, we feel very blessed and very grateful to be part of such a brilliant, dynamic, resilient community of caregivers 
of people receiving care, of healthcare workers and social justice activists, we appreciate you and we see you. So hope I see you tomorrow at one o'clock central. And if you're watching this afterwards, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.